on this week's Bondi Vet Top 5. So I've just had a feel of his bladder, it's rock hard. Oh, golly, okay. It's not exactly what I expected. She's got a lot of stones in here. Very strange indeed. I'm doubting myself now because I'm just <laughs> doubting what I'm seeing on X-ray. This week's number five. Five-month-old Safira is arriving at the Bondi Clinic to be de-sexed. We want to get her to sex, but we just want to get her checked out because she's actually leaking. Owners Lorraine, Joe and Maddie are worried their border collie puppy could have a serious problem. Oh, it's a bit of a concern. We're hoping maybe if she gets to sex, it should fix it up. This way, come on. It's not that abnormal for dogs to leak urine when they're a little bit excited or when they're old. But for Safira at her age to be doing it on quite a large scale is a bit of a worry. She might be lying in bed yep. and all of a sudden she'll get up and there's a big wet patch. But Very it's like everyday constant. Other than that, perfectly beautiful, normal. Yeah. Definitely part of the family as all, all the animals are part of the family. I know we shouldn't treat them like children but they are my darling. It's, it's clear that you, you, you really do love her. It, oh. it must be getting hard, though, with, with all the dripping. It, yeah, it does, especially when you change the sheets half a dozen times or whatever. You just wash but the just theater watching and... her get upset is enough yeah. to put a tear in your eye. Yeah. So let's take this nappy off. Can I just get you to start holding up there? Hey, Jeff. That's not exactly what I expected. What's the... Well, she just doesn't look entirely normal there. I know that Joe and Lorraine are staring at me going, why is he taking so long to speak? But Safi is not your typical female dog. Do you mind if I just take her out the back just for a second? Is this something we should be worried about? No, just, I just want to have a closer look. Okay. Yeah. When I look at Safira's belly, honestly, I'm totally confused. Neil, have a hand here, mate. She's in for desexing, but also uh, she's leaking urine. Okay. That's not even why I brought her out. Wow, that's really unusual. Her vulva is not only in the wrong place, it's further forward than it should be, but it's actually facing the wrong direction. And I reckon where you'd normally see a scrotum on a male dog, She's almost got loose skin there as well. She's got mixed genitalia. Okay. So wow. that makes her a hermaphrodite. No. Yeah. This is so incredibly rare that I know a lot of vets that have never seen a hermaphrodite in their entire veterinary career. So it's a big day in the clinic. And hermaphrodite has both male and female organs. I've probably been here about 15 years and um, I've never ever seen anything like this before. It's really quite unusual. If she's coming to be desexed, then how do you know which bits to remove? Well, that's the thing. She may have both internally. I reckon this is why she's having this urine leakage as well. When you realise that Lorraine and Joe have come in to have Safi desexed, aware that she leaks a bit of urine, I'm sure that they never expected that I'm about to walk in there and tell them that their little girl, maybe a boy, maybe a bit of both, it's not going to be easy. So, she's not your typical girl. In what yeah. way? She has her female parts down there, but she also has some evidence of male parts as well. Okay. She looks like she is a hermaphrodite. Okay. I just want you to know exactly what you're taking on here because when people discover that dogs are hermaphrodites mm -hmm. and that there is a problem with their plumbing, some people don't want to take that on. And those people often look at, at putting their dogs down. Mm. No, no, no. No. Not even an option. Yeah. Not even an option. Definitely <laughs> don't make me cry. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. It's not gonna happen. Mm. We love you. Yes. 
As far as conversations go in a vet clinic, that's one of the strangest. But thankfully, Jo and Lorraine absolutely adore this dog and they'll stand by her through anything. Okay, so where do we go from here? But... If you don't mind, what I'd like you to do today is go up and see Andrew at SASH. Mm -hmm. Because that is going to be the key to unlocking why she's leaking urine. Well, whatever she needs yeah. done to her, will do. Yeah. Very scary. So I'm actually wanting to get her there so then we can find out and then take the next step. We will do yeah. everything that we can to get it fixed. I'm sorry to tell her. It's OK. You're forgiving me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, all the best for today. OK. I'll um, obviously be waiting for news. This started off as being a simple desexing, and now they're off to Sash for a scan to tell them whether their dog's a boy or a girl or both, and really how they can fix this leaking bladder and how they can have it desexed. It's all of a sudden got very complicated. Fingers crossed, it's all okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Cheers. See ya. Okay, see you later. <laughs> all right, next step. Yeah. Oh, Female. And then question mark. Yes. <laughs> At SASH, Lorraine, Joe and Maddie have brought in one of Australia's rarest patients for a consultation. Come on, Come on. Come on sweetie. Come on, Seth. Hey. Chris has sent Safira here to me today because he's taken one look at her and gone, this ain't right. She's a hermaphrodite. And um, that in itself is not a problem, but she's leaking urine as well. And that is a problem. Ooh. There she goes. That's interesting. Hermaphrodites possess both male and female genitalia. For most vets, it's a once-in-a-career case. There's a bit odd back there. Her vulva looks like a vulva, but it's trying to migrate forward, so it's trying to be a prepuce mm -hmm. and a penis. So she's, <laughs> she's an in-betweeny, for sure. Most hermaphrodites function absolutely normally, have a normal life. Sophia is not one of those. She's leaking urine, and that's linked to this somehow, and we've got to find out how and why. I guess we've got to try and find out exactly what that plumbing problem is um, and what we can do about it. If we leave the incontinence, they do end up miserable because they get skin infections where the urine's leaking out. But worse than that is she might have been born with kidneys that aren't functioning well. If, if she's got that, I mean, she, she won't live past two. That's the scanner that she'll be in later. All oh, right, okay, yep. Safira will undergo a CT scan to discover more about her mysterious anatomy. I'm trying to be calm. Just wait and see what happens, because otherwise it, it, our mind's going to get too far ahead and then I'll get too upset. Look, it is a tough day for Lorraine and Joe. They, you know, thought she was just going to get the sex and, oh, yeah, she's got a little bit of a problem, can we give her a pill? And it suddenly turned into something that's bigger than Ben-Hur. Safira's CT scan is now underway at SASH. Gosh, we don't see this very often. No, we don't. We know she's leaking urine. We don't know why. We don't know what part of her urinary tract is not functioning properly. So we need to do a CT scan using dye that will give intravenously, that will highlight the kidneys and then highlight the bladder and the entire urinary tract. Bladder's just looking a bit weird. See? Yeah. The bladder should be essentially spherical or balloon shaped. And yet she's got this big bit kicking out here to the right. That's weird. Even the CT scans are providing more questions than answers. The fact that she's in a hermaphrodite is making this even more difficult to interpret. We're not dealing with male anatomy, we're not dealing with female anatomy, we're sort of dealing with a combination of both. And incontinence cases can be hard enough to diagnose if you've either got a girl or a boy. But when we've got this combination, it's making it really tricky to figure out what we're doing. The case is so confusing, 
Andrew has decided to make Safira a global issue. I think we need a specialist CT radiologist to have a look at it. The puppy scans will now be emailed to a team of specialist radiologists in England. The results should be back tomorrow morning. I'll have to wait to give a final decision or verdict, if you like, to have had that done. Look, the good thing is, is the kidneys seem to be fine. Oh, good that's, good. So that's good. But what I can't really figure out is what's happening to the tubes after they come out of the kidneys, where they're going in, and then, well, then what's happening after that. I think we need to keep her here overnight. I'm sorry. That I wish I could give you a clear-cut answer, but veterinary medicine is not always like that. But when you hear the specialist say that he's not, not sure, and he's got to send it off to a specialist, then you sort of get a bit. While the puppy sleeps off her sedation, she's going to have to stay in here tonight. Lorraine and Joe must now break okay? the news to their daughter Casey. <laughs> Don't make me cry. You okay? Hey, sweetie. Hey. Doctor will give us a call first thing in the morning. Look, well, for tomorrow we'll find out. Don't fret. She'll come home a whole new baby. <laughs> <laughs> Joe and Lorraine, they're amazing. They just want the best for her. But whether I can actually fix her problem surgically, I don't know. Please find attached the report for Sophia. This is a complicated case. There you go, Sherlock. Next morning, Surgeon Andrew Marchewski arrives at SASH to find a response from the specialist team in England about his rare hermaphrodite patient, Sophia. They couldn't find where the left ureter went either. Overnight, the radiologists have studied Safira's scans, but have they come up with an answer as to why the five-month-old puppy is constantly leaking urine? They're going to get a second opinion as well. Huh. It makes me feel a little bit less stupid. This will be, I'm sure, a little disappointing for Lorraine and Joe because I think, you know, they were expecting CT, there's the answer, surgery today, all fixed, but it's just not going to be that way. To, to be honest, I mean, they've given us some results, but at the end of it, they said, we need a second opinion as well. And now we're getting a third opinion. It's, it's probably a little more complex than I was hoping. A lot more complex than what Lorraine and Joe could ever have imagined. Andrew is hoping diagrams may help them understand this bewildering medical condition. This is a female dog, so what happens is the urethra comes up, empties into the floor of the vagina, and then empties out through there. Normal male anatomy is bladder, around the pubis, out here, and it comes out through the penis. What she's got is, I think, a mixture of the two. We know that we've got one ureter coming in here, we've got another one, we're not sure where it goes. But she's got this other opening that's going up into a little blind pocket, like a sack, that's filling up with urine, and then it's sitting there, and then eventually, when it gets too full, it leaks out. So I think that's where the leakings come from. I think. OK. OK. It's hard enough trying to explain this to your colleague, but trying to explain it to a couple of owners who all they want to do is get their female dog de -sexed. Hopefully they're following it all, because I know it's hard. What yeah. would happen if we didn't do any of this? If we just took her home and put nappies on her? I'm concerned that she'll get low-grade urinary tract infections especially if we've got urine pooling in here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? If we leave it as it is, I'm worried she'll get chronic infections in a bladder, which will lead to chronic kidney infections, and that can be fatal. So we just need to stop that happening. So, as I said, we'll do some more tests, and we'll see what an answer we get from there. Come on, Safiri. Go. go and do it all again, huh? Yeah. A eh? little bit different this time. Where are you, Safi? We've just got the second lot of results back and they're as about as helpful as the first lot. You're a bit of an enigma, aren't you? Enigma wrapped in a puzzle. Despite a battery of tests and two sets of CT scans sent overseas for specialist analysis, what's causing the Border Collie puppies incontinence is still a frustrating mystery. Lorraine and Joe have agreed that we've just got to take it to surgery now and, and find out exactly what's going on and get a fix. Come on, let's go. 
I can't do any more tests. None that'll help us. And at some point, you just got to draw a line in the sand and say, right, let's get in there. Hey, sweet, you're a problem. There are people all over the world scratching their heads wow. and squabbling. Come on, then, we'll get you sorted. I mean, if we can't fix her today, she'll, she'll end up with chronic incontinence, chronic infections, she'll be miserable. Like, there'll be just discomfort all the time and, and she could get really sick. So we really need to get it sorted today to give her a good life. Here we go. The pressure on Andrew is enormous. Oh, I've never seen anything like this, no. This is a career first for one of Australia's most experienced and respected veterinary surgeons. Hermaphrodites are really rare. Hermaphrodites with major plumbing problems are even rarer. So if I see another case like this in my career, I'd be lucky. Where we need to get at stuck right underneath her pubic bone, and I just cannot get to that area. The only way I'm going to be able to get to that is if I split her pelvis open. All right, well, I think we're going to have to do this. Yeah, it's, it's not what I wanted to do because it's turned it into a, a bigger surgery and, and more painful one for her. But if we don't do it, we won't fix it. With clear access to Safira's abdomen, Andrew can now see a small hole in the puppy's urethra. It's just starting to see where the urine's been pooling. So basically what I've done now is I've actually tied off the, the join between the uterus and the urethra. Um, so we can't pull anymore. So that's her uterus, testicles, and the start of a penis. It's all a bit confusing, really. We basically got rid of what I think is causing the problem, um, and then desexed her along the way. So that is that. It's taken more than four hours but Safira's groundbreaking surgery is now over. It went really well, it was really challenging, but the only way we'll know if we've been successful is she stops leaking urine. So it's gonna take us a little while before we know whether we've been a success or not. Finally, Joe and Lorraine are allowed in to see their little girl. Oh. Princess. Hey, baby. How adorable does she look? Mm. I really don't think you can use the word she, because she's she literally was half and half. She's still our little girl. She'll still be treated the same and loved the same. I mean, they've shown amazing dedication and amazing patience to get us to this point, you know, because it hasn't been simple and hopefully we've got it fixed. Where are you, Saf? Settle, pedal, settle, settle. I know, oh, God. You're a good dog. You're very clever. Have you got a dry bed? That's a dry bed. Yes, it is. You're a very clever dog. It's been five days since Safira's operation to stop her incontinence, and it appears to have worked. We've been keeping a really close eye over her the last couple of days, and the great news is, is she's got a dry bed, so she doesn't have pools of urine leaking while she's asleep anymore, and you know, she's fixed. Thank you for the kiss. Oh, thank you for the kiss. I think I have to get you home now. That was a goodbye kiss. It's been an emotional journey for Joe and Lorraine, but it's been particularly hard on their daughter, Casey, who hasn't seen her baby girl for more than a week. She's all good now. Yeah. Seth, who's that? Yahoo, look out! Yahoo! It's been a crazy story. I literally did lose sleep thinking, you know, once I got in there, was I going to be able to fix it? Because I really, I didn't know. But to see her at the end of that fixed and jumping around like she's normal, is, you know, it's really satisfying. That's Huge a pleasure. thank you for looking after her, all the staff, for looking after her the way they did. It has been a pleasure. And especially you, for oh, it. Yes. And it was a good result. I'm not sure I want another patient like Sophia for a little while, because, uh, you know, my brain can only handle so much. Look at the boy. <laughs> Number four. In Melbourne, Danny's first patient is being rushed in. A little kitty cat, um, it's been blocked. I've just had a feel of his bladder, it's rock hard. Oh, golly, okay. Um, he hasn't urinated for about 24 hours. Oh, just a bit concerned. 
moment. Yeah. Eight-year-old Jasper isn't weeing and he's acutely distressed. So our heart rate is flying along, so we are definitely painful, but things haven't progressed to a point we're in really bad trouble. Oh, yes, mate. Ouch. All right, mate, get you some pain relief straight away, all right? Um, we'll get some bloods, yep. um, get him on fluids, sure. and then we'll get everything set, set up. up. Yeah, we're gonna have to unblock this. From my understanding, usually there's a mucus plug with crystals and it's just a matter of flushing and pushing through that blockage to then release that obstruction. So it'll be um, a new experience for me and a really great learning opportunity as well. So but let's get you sorted, mate, hey? Get those bloods happening now. Time is definitely of the essence. Usually male cats that become blocked and if that isn't addressed immediately, the risk is that their potassium levels can go through the roof and cause arrhythmias in the heart, uh, which can eventually lead to death. You're a tough boy. We've got this catheter in now, we can give him some pain relief and then we will start him on fluids, but we'll wait to see what uh, the bloods are saying um, as to how sort of aggressive we have to be with our fluid therapy. We'll also get him ready to uh, anaesthetise him and put a catheter into his urethra to unblock that bladder. That is going to make a big difference. Okay, but we have to stabilise first. The danger is if you don't stabilise them first, potentially you can push them over the edge and end up in a more life-threatening situation. Okay, how are we looking? Okay, good, so the potassium's normal, so I'm happy we're all good to go to the GA and get this cat unblocked. Danny wants to act as quickly as possible to help relieve some of Jasper's extreme abdominal pain. It's a nice snug fit to that tube. An ultrasound will show if Jasper has any bladder stones or a mass such as cancer, which might be causing the obstruction. It's less likely, but we need to make sure that's not happening. A little bit, but not So terribly. there's your bladder. Wow. I'm seeing a lot of debris in there, uh, a lot of grit. It's not okay. Just measuring Jasper's bladder size on the ultrasound, it's six centimetres by four centimetres, which is huge for a cat. It should not be that big, so this is a really serious situation. Uh, this obstruction has been there for some time for that to occur, so we really need to act quickly. So once Jasper is anaesthetised properly, we will start to unblock him. So we will use a catheter to place that into his urethra and start flushing lots and lots of saline uh, to remove whatever's obstructing that. As the urine starts to flush out, Danny is paying close attention to how it looks. If it's nice and clear, that's good news. If it's looking really uh, murky and bloody, then we are concerned that he could easily re-obstruct. Uh, so we'll need to keep flushing and flushing and flushing till that's all nice and clear. So we have unblocked the urethra. Uh, we've shifted whatever obstruction was there. We have removed that catheter and now urine is just flowing out. So we're just expressing that bladder now to try and empty it as much as we can. Really this is unblocked relatively easily today compared to what it could be. So this is good. This is good news for Jasper. I think we've got lots of uh, crystals and, and that mucousy plug that's been forming there. Uh, so we will test this urine and see what crystals we have uh, and that will give us a plan going forward to prevent this from happening again. Let's hop into bed mate. A much more comfortable oh. Jasper can now peacefully sleep off the anaesthetic. So Jasper's just going to rest up in recovery now. I'm sure he's going to be fine. It was a little bit daunting. Uh, we were in a bit of a serious situation and I had not uh, done this procedure before, but I am just so excited. I did it. Yes. 
this week's number three. What a good girl. What a good girl. In Atlanta, Georgia, Linda and her pit bull Bretta have been inseparable since her son brought the rescue dog home seven years ago. We don't know how old Beretta is because my son's friends found Beretta and another dog tied to a tree, abandoned. No food, no water. That was in 2014, and she's been with us since. Here you go. I was one of those people that was like, pit bulls, no way, they're dangerous, I never want one. And I would tell you now, I would never have a different kind of dog ever. But Linda is concerned. Lately, her beloved Bretta has been looking lethargic and is having problems urinating. Beretta is starting to have accidents in the house. You can tell that she is uncomfortable with the fact that she's having accidents. She looks ashamed and she hides on her bed. And then when she's outdoors um, attempting to go to the bathroom, she appears somewhat, I'll just call it distressed because she's trying to go and can't. Would you want some more? She's our little queen. We want to make sure that she has a happy life, a comfortable life, and she gets to enjoy her retirement the best way possible. Hello, Miss Todd. How you doing? Good to see you. Good to see, see you. Too. This is Beretta. Yeah. How you doing? Linda has brought Bretta to Arvid, hoping he can make the dream of a happy retirement come true. You don't like being the center of attention? Huh? No. I see it in the eyes. I see it in the eyes. The eyes tell it all. So, tell me what's been going on. Well, she had a little accident on the floor, which never happens with Beretta. Um, so I thought, oh, that's odd. But then when we took her out to go to the bathroom this morning, she attempted to go, but nothing would come out. All right. What I'm going to do is just examine her here. Okay. See what we're dealing with. The symptoms that the owner's describing is that she's straining to urinate. It sounds like a possible urinary tract infection. Hopefully it's just a routine UTI. We treat that. She gets better. She goes about her life. But as Arvid examines Bretta's abdomen, he detects something that could put her life at risk. There's something concerning. When I kind of feel her bladder, I just kind of feel a little gritty, or a little, a little crunchy, if you will. What would cause that? Term. Well, what I'm hoping is not the case is some bladder stone. Examining Beretta, you know, nothing really stood out until I got to the abdomen. And I'm suspecting the bladder has some stones in there. She can get blocked up and not be able to urinate. If that happens, that can be a very life-threatening situation because it can cause poisons to build up in our body, okay? Not to mention a potential rupture of the bladder. But I just want to take an x-ray to make sure. Okay. Good girl. We'll be right back. Okay. It is what I thought it was going to possibly be. She's got a lot of stones in here, quite a few. All those little tiny white dots, if you will. And the fact that they're a little on the smaller side makes it a very high risk for them to get sucked down into the urethra, which can cause an obstruction. And if she can't urinate, that can be a very life-threatening situation. Arvid gives Linda the devastating news. All right, so. Well, that doesn't look good. So it is what I thought. She's got quite a few bladder stones in there. The best way to eliminate it right now, immediately, is surgery. I wouldn't want to wait on it and, no. give, them, and give them a chance to cause an obstruction. Sounds like we don't have an option. Well, I would say that's the better option. Okay. Well, thank you, Dr. Edward. You're very welcome. All right. We'll take care of her. My only concern with these surgeries, though, is that when you make an incision into the bladder, a lot of time that just sucks the stones right into the urethra, making the surgery a little bit more challenging. Time to go night-night. There's the tongue. <laughs> that still makes my guts hurt. I get nervous when 
any kind of surgery for anybody or anything. I really don't want to do this, but I get it. We have to. Again. So there we go. We got the bladder here. And there are some of the stones coming out now. They're just popping out. This bladder is just really angry, really irritated. Pain and discomfort. This big one just popped out. Because if we had one of those stones in us, we'd be crying like a baby. So that's a testament as to the amazing pain tolerance that pets have. So what I'm trying to do is just flush them all out. After flushing out the bladder, Arvid inserts a tube into Beretta's urethra. I can feel them rubbing in there. He must flush out any stones that could block her urinary tract and potentially kill her. So that's what happens. You make an incision into the bladder and it just sucks the stones back into the urethra here. So here you can see all the stones that's coming out. They're just everywhere and it's just tough to try to get all of them out. The amount of bladder stones definitely would have caused an obstruction and her life would have been at risk. We saved Beretta's life here today. Hopefully she's thankful. <laughs> Right, we are all done. Another life saved and another pet that's gonna go home pain-free and live the rest of their life happy. As Beretta recovers from her life-saving surgery. It's like, oh, just bring her, please bring her. Linda is anxious to see the abandoned pit bull she gave a second chance at life. <laughs> I'm sitting here waiting for her and I can hear her crying back there and it's breaking my heart. She's so stoic normally, doesn't ever make a sound. You never know when anything's bothering her. Hello. Hello. It's been a day. I, I it's been a day. A day. I hear her crying back there. Oh, I know. She's ready to go home and she's definitely ready to see you. I am ready so to see her. I think she's doing just fine because okay. she's got some good pain meds on board. But I want to show you the stones that are in here. <laughs> Uh, do I want to? Yeah, is. Oh my lord. It almost looks like calcium deposits. Oh my god, that's a lot. The bladder is completely clean. The urethra is completely clean. Got all of them. I just can't believe that was in her. I mean, I've never seen anything like it in my life. In here, look. Right. Here we go. There we go. <laughs> There we go. Oh, we got a little wag. Come on, let's Look, go. This way. Let's go. Oh, yeah, she's drawn this way. There we go. Come on, All sweetheart. Right. Thank you, Dr. You're very welcome. Beretta is off to go home and start her recovery process. Like I said, another life saved, and uh, I'm happy. Come on. Number two. Oh, Lily, what are we going to do with you? Hey, eh? what are we going to do with you? Scott's first two patients are in Teddington. Sisters Pickle and Lily are waiting with their owner, Sally. For the last year or so, they have been a bit incontinence. Well, for most of their lives, we've noticed little bits of dribbling, but it has started to get worse to the extent now that quite often they're lying there and you just literally see urine dribbling out of them and they've absolutely no idea that that's happened. So, yeah, it's starting to get quite annoying now, not to mention very wet and smelly. <laughs> Sally and her daughter Katrina love their two girls. Who's my big boy? Big boy. Yeah, look at me. But the constant leaking is out of control and they're desperate to get it fixed. Poor little pickle. And now she's weed on me. <laughs> oh, looks like I've wet myself. <laughs> it's just 
a normal day in the household, eh? I'd really like to have two dogs that don't leak all over the floor. I'd like to be able to walk into my house, sit down on the sofa and not shoot straight back up again with a wet bottom. So definitely hopeful that Scott will get to the bottom of all of this. Hello, sir. Hello. How are you, mate? Mm, good. How are you? I'm really good. I'm nice really. I'm looking forward to seeing you. these girls. Oh, well, please come and meet them. What is that smell, Sal? Oh, sorry. There's a serious pong, <laughs> yeah, isn't there? In here, there's a I know, serious smell. Oh, I know. And actually. Look. Oh, lovely. I wonder what the smell was, and uh, there's the answer. Who's the culprit for that? Which one? Hey, who's looking sheepish? Walking into Sally's house, straight away I'm hit with a wall of smell. It's not a good smell. This isn't potpourri. This is the smell of wee. Not very good start. Yeah. So do they both wee around the house? They do. At the moment, Lily's probably slightly worse. You can actually see it flowing out of her sometimes. And how often no. are we talking? Once or twice a day. Once or twice a day? Yeah. Your dogs are peeing in the house? Well, they're not peeing, they're dribbling. Oh, Sal. <laughs> The obvious problem in Sally's house is that she is wading through puddles of wee. Lily has urinated on the floor and she doesn't know that she's done it. And that's clearly a worry. <laughs> Can I have a little feel of you? All right. Sal, is there ever any blood in the urine at all? Not that I've noticed. Okay, so it just looks like normal old yeah. wee. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just inappropriately positioned. Yes. <laughs> Usually on my lap. <laughs> Seriously, they wee on your lap? Yeah. Oh, that's great. But grim. they don't wee, they dribble. I love the way that you're making excuses for them, which is lovely. <laughs> I know, I know. But your version of normal is not normal. No. Having an examination of the two dogs, I can see they're very healthy and they're clearly much loved. But there is a problem here. I'm not sure what it is. It could be a congenitally inherited condition that they've had since they were puppies. It could be infection. It could be hormonal urinary incontinence. There's a lot of question marks here. So what I need to do is to take both dogs into the practice where I'll understand exactly what's going on. Come on, let's say bye to mommy. Bye bye. See, See ya. Later, bye. Bye bye. Bye bye girls. Off to the practice with you. Come on. Yes. Try and cross your legs for the journeys, would you girls? Yeah. Thank you. These girls are weeing all over Sally's house. So Jess, if you want to take her through to x-ray. Back at the practice, Scott is going to x-ray both of Sally's dogs, starting with Lily. But first, a special dye is being injected, which will outline the urinary tract and show up any abnormalities. Right, x-ray. We take a series of x-rays. It will look a little bit like a roadmap of the urinary tract and see if there's any reason why these girls are incontinent. Weird. Very strange indeed. Mm -hmm. I'm doubting myself now because I'm just <laughs> doubting what I'm seeing on x-ray. The x-ray looks like there's one kidney, which is pretty strange. Uh, and it also doesn't really explain why the dog's incontinent. Establishing that Lily doesn't have a left kidney, I don't exactly know what to think of it, and it's certainly not something that I was expecting. I then moved to do an ultrasound on Pickle, because I just want to make sure that she does definitely have both kidneys. Okay, so there's one. Yeah, and there's, there's the second one. Thankfully, she does, but I still feel that as these sisters are genetically related, and the problem with Lily is likely to be a congenital abnormality from birth, they can both share similar issues. Good girls, that's it, come on, come on. Where's mummy? Hello, baby. Hello, Mummy. has arrived, hopeful that Scott has found the reason for her leaky oh, dogs. I need to sit down after oh, that. <laughs> so I have done a excretory urography. It's basically a contrast yeah. Yeah. image of the urinary system. Yeah. And it seems like Lily doesn't have a left kidney. What? Yep. Ooh. I then just ultrasounded Pickle. Yeah. To make sure that I wasn't going mad. <laughs> and I could see that there is actually two kidneys in okay. her abdomen. Right. But this is yeah. clearly some sort of congenital abnormality, so from birth. Okay. So we need to send you up to the Royal Veterinary College where the specialists there will do a CT scan and that'll give a lovely 3D image of everything that we need to check out and see what's what and what's not. Mm -hmm. 
and also do a cystoscopy, which is basically where they put a camera into the bladder and they have a look around, not only to see where the ureters come from the kidneys into the bladder mm -hmm. and where they drain. Yeah, okay. All right then, Sal. Okay, well, thank you very much. So now I'm going to be sending Sally and the girls up to the Royal Veterinary College where the specialists will be performing some more tests and then hopefully try and fix them. Bye, mate. Okay. Bye, bye, Scotty. Bye. If he wants them to go up there, they'll go up there. Trust him implicitly. But, yeah, I'm worried. Hmm. Come on, let's go. Come on, you girls. Let's go find out what today he's got to bring, shall we? Back in town, Sally has arrived at the Royal Veterinary College with her two bulldogs, Lily and Pickle. Come on, Lou. Good girls. Hi there, Sally. Hi, yes. Hi, Stein. Hi, Stein. Uh, nice one of the internal you. medicine specialists with my team. Uh, Hi, team. And these are Pickle and Lily. That's correct. Did I get it right? Yeah, yes, you did well. <laughs> and uh, they are weeing in inappropriate places, they right? They are weeing everywhere. Very good. Yeah. So yes, up to us to figure nice. out why that might be happening and please. see whether or not we can do something about it. Pretty please. Very good. Shall we get a room? <laughs> yeah. That's Thank nice. you. Follow us. Go on, Pickle, Lily. Here we go. Yeah. Come on, girls. Pickle and Lily are incontinent. We thought it was just a little bit of dribbling here and there, but it's getting worse as they're getting older. They're now starting to lie there and, um, yeah, it's not very pleasant, basically. Nice damp floors, nice damp sofas, house smelling of pee. It's, um, yeah, getting a little bit unpleasant. Hello, you. Internal medicine specialist Dr Stein Neeson will be in charge of the investigation. And we can see the problem in action here with already a puddle being created. So I see many of these cases on a yearly basis, but Lily poses a real dramatic case with the urine dribbling in front of my eyes on the examination table. I can't imagine how difficult it is to have Lily in your own home. So we definitely need to try and fix this. Right, we need to figure out what the detailed anatomy is of both Pickle's and Lily's urinary tract mm -hmm. because something is preventing both of them to keep the urine in the bladder. So I would suggest that we use a CT scanner to really get down and dirty with the mm -hmm. anatomy of uh, both Lily and Pickle's. What started off with just being a few dribbles is now turning into puddles and I think before long we'll be turning into lakes. Lily is first in the CT machine. When Scott x-rayed Lily, he discovered she had only one kidney. So the fact that Lily has only got one kidney is slightly odd, but that sort of gives me a hint that I should be open-minded as a vet to look for other abnormalities that Lily was born with. The one point that I'm looking at here is this white dot which is the tubing that normally goes from the kidney to the bladder. What happens here with Lily is that this tubing is actually ending up very, very late into the urinary tract in the bit that we call the urethra, which is not in the bladder anymore. So that explains perfectly well why Lily is incontinent, because if your urine goes not into your bladder, but into your urethra, there's no mechanism to stop it from coming out. Now it's Pickle's turn to be scanned. Unlike her sister Lily, Pickle was born with both kidneys. So we've just done Pickle's CT scan and we've got a double whammy. Pickle does have two kidneys and both kidneys are ending up putting the urine in the wrong place way too far back. So Pickle has got the same problem as her sister. It's time to break the news to owner Sally. So they both have an ectopic ureter, uh, which basically means that we've got a bad connection between kidney and bladder. And we are going to try to create a good connection once again. Um, and the strategy we will be looking forward to trying to use is a laser technique. Okay, so basically you're talking about rewiring my dogs? <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> re-plumbing actually. Fair enough. <laughs> this is absolutely brilliant news because it's something we can actually do something about. Yeah, what I really didn't want was to be told that this was behavioural and then it's something that's out of my hands, but this is something that we can actually work on. 
Surgery on both the dogs will be scheduled for tomorrow. Not quite home and dry, but certainly hopefully a lot drier than we were before. We're quite asleep already. Yeah, so we're pretty chilled. Both Lily and Pickle have abnormalities in their urinary tract, so they have tubes that connect the wrong components together, essentially. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a laser to try and correct those changes. Laser is a really exciting form of surgery because it's minimally invasive and this is one of the reasons it's attractive not only to owners but also to the pets themselves because it means that their recovery time is much, much faster. Okay, I think we're ready to start. Lily is first to undergo the procedure. Dr Roseanne and her team are using a camera to explore Lily's urinary tract. So the kidney that she does have it's is her right, right, which would fit with that being the opening to the to right, right yeah. ureter. So we're about to start lasering. So we're going to laser the abnormal band of tissue between where the tube from the kidney down to the bladder should be and essentially open that out so that the urine comes down that tube into the bladder um, rather than opening out in the urethra where it is at the moment. Stop. Yep. Yep. Okay. So we've been able to laser the little bit of excess tissue that was present. We did find one slightly unusual finding was that she had a very small blind-ended tunnel which may have been the opening of the ureter from the kidney that doesn't exist. But so far, so good. Procedure has gone as we hoped it would. Now it's Pickle's turn for the high-tech laser surgery. In terms of the procedure, it is quite technical. Every dog is very different, and so the same would be true for Lily and Pickle, and that creates some of the challenges that we have with this procedure. Although Pickle has both her kidneys, she shares the same genetic abnormality as her sister, which means her internal plumbing is faulty, and she constantly leaks urine. Okay. So both Lily and Pickle's procedures have gone very well today. We'll have to see how well they recover and the next sort of 24, 48 hours really will tell us whether they're going to be continent after this procedure or not. Do you reckon they're a bit better? I am covered in your hair, Lily. Uh, it's better than being covered in her urine. <laughs> in Teddington, two-year-old sisters Lily and Pickle have recovered well from the laser surgery on their leaky bladders. Both of them seem to be plumbed in a little bit weird. So basically the ureters weren't quite going where they should be, which meant what you were pouring in one end was pretty much coming out the other. Ready, coverage. Sally was hopeful that after the high-tech laser procedure on both the girls, her days of endlessly cleaning up after them would be over. Which body, which body? We were always told it would be a 50% success rate, and it was a 50% success rate. One of them's working, and the other one, unfortunately, seems to be a little bit better, but certainly not where we'd hoped. So we're very pleased with the fact that Lily's now totally dry. It's fantastic. And we're very hopeful that Pickle, with a bit of medication, will have a nice dry dog at the end of all of this. So fingers crossed. Sally is staying positive. It has made a difference. I only have to wash the sofa covers, you know, twice a week instead of four times a week. <laughs> and this week's number one. Young bitch, you might laugh. In Melbourne, Chris has a more placid patient about to fly up to Sydney for a life-changing operation. Good girl. Get your bags, Kate. Ready to go? Six-month-old Rottweiler pup Keisha has a serious genetic deformity which results in the constant and painful leaking of urine. Well, we had a lot of people say to us, what's the point? It's only a hundred bucks to get them put down. Just <laughs> don't put up with it. We, we can't do that. Oh, this is my little girl. Yes, I love her. Good girl, aren't you? Hey? Matt and Mel just didn't have the $5,000 needed for the complex operation. They were pleading to organise some sort of a payment plan. We could give a deposit up front go in there every week and obviously give them what we had. But 
no one would accept it. Cry nearly every day, didn't I? It's just not what fair on her, best. it's not fair on us. In desperation, Matt contacted a radio station. He was put in touch with Chris, who organised Keisha's much needed operation free of charge. Uh, what would I say to Dr Chris? I love you. Thank you very much. Give you right, darling. You ain't been there for too long, mate. So now the bewildered pup is at Melbourne Airport, about to embark on a life-defining journey. Out at Sydney Airport, the jet-setting Keisha and her owner Matt arrived to meet Chris. Hello. We've heard a lot about you. She looks as though she's a bit crispy, so I'm going to go to Bondi, work off some of that energy before she goes into hospital. Welcome to Sydney, huh? Welcome to Sydney. Later this afternoon, Keisha is booked in to have serious surgery on her rare medical condition. But right now, the puppy's just happy to be lapping up the Bondi experience. <laughs> When you came to Sydney, I don't think, I don't think she had that in mind. Hey, she's got class at least. Yeah, well, she's got standards, mate. <laughs> she's just smacked him down. Good girl. Good you like that, eh? You're a special girl, aren't you, Case? You're one of a kind. Playtime is over. Next stop, the small animal specialist hospital, Sash. Oh, girl, we'll get you sorted out, won't we? She's really quite moist here, isn't she? Yeah. Just dribbling even now. At SASH, Keisha is being examined by specialist surgeon Andrew Marchewski. Her rare genetic deformity means she can't stop urinating. X-rays reveal one of Keisha's kidney tubes is not connected to her bladder. So what we'll look at doing is cutting it off at the urethra and then making a little hole into the bladder and suturing it into there and, and re-implanting it. So we like this. Welding it back on. Pretty much. Right, eh? Fixing the plumbing up. Yep. Bit nervous. See what happens. Now we'll just see what he says after he does the ultrasounds. Keisha is given a diuretic, which will make her produce urine quickly. It's all right. Could you have no, no, no. Andrew is hoping the ultrasound will confirm only one tube is faulty. But the news is not good. Right. Looks like she's got bilateral ectopic ureters. I guess unfortunately what we've found is that both of them are not going to the right spot. The risk involved in the operation um, has dramatically increased. We'll have to be very careful and monitor her kidney function and her urine production. I know it's not quite the news that you want, it's certainly not the news I wanted. No, it's... Um, but uh, I guess that's why we did the test, because yeah, there, there was that doubt today. about it, and now we know, so I can prepare better for tomorrow. But they have got a very close bond. I mean, he's, he's moved heaven and earth to make sure that he can get his dog fixed. Good girl. Are you all right? Coffee. Yeah, I think it'll be a bit of a mess if we have any problems. Yeah. She's all Andrews now, so... Seems like he knows what he's on about. Confused me with the jargon, so... We'll see what happens. These problems is uh, they're huge because you know if you, you can't fix it, she won't be able to be an inside dog. It'll increase the risk of getting infections. Unable to fix it, I think you'd have to be looking. One of the options would be euthanasia for her, so which would not be nice. That would break his heart. That's right. So yeah, no, I'm pretty sure she'd be right anyway. You know, she better be. <laughs> this is difficult surgery, and Keisha will be on the operating table for at least four hours. That's the left one, that's the right one. Yeah, that's interesting. Is that connecting to the uterus or? Yeah, wow. wow. Is a urogenital nightmare. Mm. <laughs> Sadly, the pup's internal problems have been caused by inbreeding. It's a perfect example of why you, you shouldn't breed closely related animals to each other. 
If the marathon operation works, the puppy will at last have a normal, pain-free life. I still have concerns for that, but um, I think we've got a good chance. Hey, gorgeous. She's a real sweetie, isn't she? She's a real gentle yeah. lady. Look at this. It's really good. It's looking good. It's a nice stitch in the case. Yeah. How do you feel? So it's looking like she'll be allowed out in another day or two? She has to urinate. Until she, she does that, I really here. can't give you a, a time, time um, yep. you know, and we've just got to go step by step. Keisha's owner Matt moment, needs to return to Melbourne for work, but the pup can't go until she proves her plumbing is fixed. You just need to do some wheeze. You'll be all better soon, mate. Yeah? Go home in a couple of days. Yes? Good girl. Everybody is still waiting for Keisha to prove the operation has been a success. Finally, a breakthrough. Wayne. Andrew can now sign her release papers and Keisha is ready to head home. Yeah, it's amazing what you get excited about when you're a vet sometimes. <laughs> Chris promised Matt and Mel he'd personally deliver Keisha back home to Melbourne. Who's he? Hello. <laughs> Hello, my girl. Hello. Have they been working out here? She's a beautiful dog, just one of a kind in every in every way possible. It's brilliant. It's absolutely awesome. Like, I, yeah, don't think. <laughs> she say thank you, Dad. <laughs> But yeah, you, Andrew, and everyone at the Sash Hospital are really good to be there. Happy to be here. Bottom of our hearts. No Thanks good. very much, Chris. I want to give you a hug. <laughs> no Thank you. My pleasure. She's back. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny. If you enjoyed this video, then please remember to subscribe to the Bondi Vet YouTube channel. Click on the screen now to continue watching more great content.